There is absolutely no way that T.I. got a year and a day for the charges that he had. So let's talk about it. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Shout out to all the law-abiding criminals out there. As always, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Very controversial subject today, guys. I don't know if I'm going to wear my shades just because I got a little ring light up here. And, yeah, you see that? Every time I look up there, you can see it. But damn, I need a haircut. Anyway, so very controversial, man. And here's the thing. You guys know I did fed time. And, you know, T.I. went to jail for having a bunch of guns. He had machine guns. He had silencers. I'm pretty sure he had a bulletproof vest. But he also got charged with a regular felon in possession of a firearm, which is a 922G. It's 18 U.S.C. 922G subsection 1, which is the same thing that I was charged with. Now, I had a multi-million dollar check fraud operation, but because that only had 60 months max, my weapon possession overtook that charge because it had a 120 month maximum and I got the max. I got the 120 months. Now, before I go any further, first and foremost, I like T.I. I've been listening to his music since around 2002, believe it or not. I was in state prison and my buddy work was called the back dock where all the trash comes through and he found a cassette tape because we could have tape players back then. They eventually transitioned into CD players and now they have MP3, but... So he brought me this tape and it was T.I.'s first tape. I'm serious. That's what it was called. And I remember I had never heard of him before. So I put it in my tape deck and I ended up loving it. And I've been listening to him ever since. I don't have anything against T.I. I'm not out here in the street. So that kind of shit doesn't matter to me. But also, I really can't say that he actually snitched because I don't know the circumstances. But what I do know from doing Fed time and going through the system and seeing other guys with certain charges, I know that something just does not add up. We're going to start with the fact that he had the 922 G1. Now, T.I. has been in prison before. He went for possession with intent to distribute cocaine in Georgia, which is about as serious as you can get next to trafficking. So next thing down is possession with intent to distribute. So he had also had another gun charge by a convicted felon and a silencer previous to all this crap in the feds. Now, that's a good little criminal background there. And the way that the federal system works is they give you a criminal history category based on how many points you have. The more trouble you get in, the more points you get, and it pulls you across that guideline, and it gives you a, a bigger range. So you get criminal history uh, category, and then you go down on your base offense level, and I think that the 922 G1 starts off at a base offense level of, what is it, 18? Maybe 24? I can't remember. It's been so long. But either way, it just doesn't add up. It intersects, and that's how you get your time. You got your offense level. You get a base offense, and then they enhance you or reduce whatever. And then you've got your criminal history, and it meets in the middle, and it gives a guideline range. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. Just with a 922 G1, that's probably my dog trying to get in the door. Just with a 922 G1, I have never, ever seen anybody get only one year. I'm not saying that it absolutely does not happen. But I know all the guys I know, they get like three, four years, five years, or like me, the whole damn entire thing, 10 years. I had this charge, and that is the only gun charge I had. T.I. got caught with machine guns. He got caught with silencers. So he didn't just have 922 G1. He had some 924s in there. He had some like 922 subsection O's, whatever they are. You'll have to do that research on your own. But he had multiple rapid fire guns with silencers which even law-abiding citizens are not supposed to have and the man got a year and a day a lot of people that i've talked to about this back when it first happened because i was in prison and it was a very heated topic people just did not want to believe that he would cooperate is the fact they'd be like well he's rich well here's the thing you can't buy the feds get that shit out of your head you do not pay for the feds your celebrity status does not matter just think of all the famous people you know that have gotten their asses handed to him in federal court. Bernie Madoff ain't never getting out. He's going to die in prison, and he was richer than anybody that we know. He's damn sure richer than T.I. So money does not matter. You can't pay your way out of that. There is only one way to get up under a federal mandatory minimum. It's called a 5K1. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, well, isn't there a Rule 35 also for snitching? Yeah, but that comes after sentencing. 
5K 1.1 is a motion for downward departure at sentencing. So the only way to get up under a mandatory minimum or anything like that is you got to cooperate. And that's what 5K 1.1 is. It is a downward departure, meaning they go down so you get less time for cooperation. And the more substantial your cooperation is, the more time you get off. So can I with absolute certainty say that he snitched or whatever? I can't, but I know that all the circumstances are there. The time, how much he got versus the charges, it just does not add up. You get caught with machine guns, they are going to serve your ass. The guys I know in federal prison that had machine guns or silencers or anything of that sort, modified weapons, they got 30 years, 20 years, 25 years. This guy gets a year and a day, man. And like I said, I got nothing against him. I just know that this came across my radar today. I saw something about it and it just put me back in that space whenever all this first happened and arguing with guys in prison. But man, when you've been in the feds, you know, you see these people, you get familiar with the system, you know how it works, you know what can and can't be done. This is not states. There are no back doors and ways to get out of things. The feds operate one way, and that is the only way. They have guidelines, they have rules they have to follow, ranges and all these things, and you're not getting up under that. It just does not happen. So I'm going to tell you, man, with having a drug charge and then also getting caught with another gun and a silencer even before all this happened, for the charges, the time just did not make sense, man. He should have gotten a lot more time than that. He probably should have done about five years. It just makes sense with the criminal history that would have put him in a certain category and with the base offense level and the enhancements because I know when you get that 922 G1, they're going to enhance the shit out of you. I got enhanced for having the serial numbers filed off. I got enhanced because it was uh, used in connection with the um, check fraud operation. They didn't hit me with a 924C, which would be actually having the gun during the commission of the crime. But because I possessed that weapon and I was doing check fraud, they enhanced me two levels, saying that it was to protect the counterfeit operation. So guys, you do your own independent research. Let me know what you think down in the comments, man. Do you think that T.I. snitched? Do you think that he did something else? What are your thoughts on it? I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Until next time.